Oh man, I thought exit grids were the biggest pain in the butt until I tried to make a new world map. Yep, making a world map, converting it, then importing it into your new mod is not the easiest thing to do, unless you know just a little bit of batch scripting and have FFmpeg. Don't forget to like this video. Everybody on YouTube says this helps get the word out, and I'd love to see more people making mods for this awesome retro game. There are only a couple of pieces of software needed for this mod. You should already have an image editor, frame animator, and FFmpeg, all of which you might already have if you follow my previous modding vids. If you need help finding and installing these pieces of software, I've got a couple of videos up explaining how to do just that, and links should be in the description, if not up here in the corner. There's only one new piece of software you'll need, MSK to BMP 2020, Mask to Bitmap 2020, which the original author to Maparacle, hopefully I pronounced that right, was awesome enough to rewrite and upload to GitHub for the rest of us, and it works out of the box with no install required. There should be a link in the description for it, and here's how you download it on GitHub. Okay, assuming you've already got all this stuff, there are a couple of ground rules for how you should create your world maps to make them compatible with Fallout 2. First of all, the image has to be a specific size, but there is some flexibility and here's how it works. When a world map is completed, it's divided up into a set of tiles that are organized in rows and columns that you can change the width and height of by changing just one number on the worldmap.txt file located in your modded Fallout 2 slash data slash data folder. For some reason, this number isn't that easy to find, but searching for num horizontal tiles will pull it up for you. By default, the number of horizontal tiles is 4, and the total number of tiles that ships with the game is 20, which places the tiles in a 4x5 grid. In theory, you can change the number of horizontal tiles to make the map either wider or narrower, which can affect the total size depending on what values you use. But I've had crashing issues with some configurations, so definitely do some testing if you want to mess with this setting. The tiles themselves have to be a specific size, 350 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall, and this will determine the total size of your world map since it has to be a multiple of these. The default world map size is 1400 pixels wide by 1500 pixels tall, or 4 times 350 pixels wide by 5 times 300 pixels tall, which is probably the easiest way to start making your new world map. I'll be using GIMP to make my map, mostly because it's free and open source, but any image editor will work as long as it exports to PNG, bitmap, or GIF. In GIMP, start by making a new file and change the image size to match the multiple of tiles for your map. For me, that's 1400 wide by 1500 tall. Once you have this new template, do whatever artwork you want to your map. Since this is a modding video, not a video on GIMP specifically, I'm just gonna fast forward through this part. Okay, we've got a completed map. Next step is to export it and convert it into tiles or vice versa, convert it to tiles first then export depending on your preference, since I'm gonna show you both of these methods here. The first method I'll be showing you is slower, but can be done inside GIMP if you prefer not to use FFmpeg. To start, if you click and drag on the ruler bars on the top and left of GIMP's interface, you can place a guideline on your canvas. If you space the guides out to create a set of tiles of the proper size, 350 pixels by 300, you can click on image, then select slice using guides to divide your map image into a series of individual images, which you can then save as individual tiles. If you want to move one of these guides around, press M or select the move icon and then drag and drop the guide wherever it needs to go. The exact placement in pixels is actually shown in the bottom corner here, so pay attention to that when placing these guides. So my vertical guides, the ones that I drag out from here, are placed at 350 pixels, 700 pixels, and 1050 pixels, or 1050 pixels right here. The horizontal guides are placed at 300 pixels, 600 pixels, 900 pixels, and 1200 pixels. Once you're done spacing the guides out correctly, you can click on image, then select slice using guides to divide your map image into a series of individual images, which you can then save as individual tiles. When you go to export each tile, three rules should be followed to ensure compatibility with Frame Animator and Fallout 2. First, the image format should be either PNG, Bitmap, or GIF in order to work with Frame Animator. I prefer PNG myself as color options are easier to figure out on GIMP. Second, the naming system is very specific. The top leftmost tile is the first tile Fallout 2 reads and should be named WRLDMP00. Each subsequent tile just increases the last two digits by one, going from left to right, then starting over on the next row from left to right again. So in this case, the names will be from world map 00 to world map 03, and then start over on the next row from 04 to 07. 
and then so on and so on to world map 19. But I'm just going to start with world map 00 here and I will show you the rest as we progress. Third, when you export as a PNG file, you can uncheck all of these boxes except for one, save color profile. Make sure this box is checked when you export, otherwise Frame Animator will throw an error. Again, there are a few alternate configurations you can try if you're looking to do something experimental, and I'll link this wiki below so you can refer to it. Now, if using this method works for you and you don't want to use FFmpeg, then skip the next section because I'm about to show you the fast way to do all of this. This method requires FFmpeg to be installed. If you don't have it already, check my video on how to install FFmpeg. Link should be in the top corner here or in the description. First, take your full map and export it using the same settings as before, as a PNG and saving the color profile. Second, create a new batch file by making a new text document and saving it with a .bat extension. In this batch file, copy and paste the rather lengthy script I have in the description. Here's a short run through of the script. For those of you who may not be familiar with this yet, for slash f tokens equals percent percent g in directory slash b start at png do, well, basically that means for all the files in the current directory with the png extension, store each file name in percent percent g and do this ffmpeg dash i percent percent g dash filter complex which means run FFmpeg with the input file name in percent percent %g, which is the variable we just created, and apply the filter complex command like this. 0 colon v crop 350 300 zero, zero, out 00. Zero. And this means crop the image to 350 by 300 pixels, starting at the top left corner, pixel 00, zero and store it in out 00, zero, which is repeated 19 more times in order to create all the tiles for our map. The rest of this code does the same thing for each section of the image and stores it to the relevant output name. Dash map out zero zero world map zero zero dot png basically saves the output image to the relevant file name. So when you have out zero zero, it comes from here, goes into here, and then is saved as world map zero zero dot png. Out zero one comes from here, goes into here, and is saved into world map zero one dot png. And that's just repeated over and over and over again up until world map 19, which for this image is the last tile in the set. While this looks complicated, the actual structure is pretty simple. There's just 20 different manual crops going on in one line. I'm sure there's a better way to write this script, but for now, this works well enough. If anybody wants to drop any hints on how to write it better, I will happily update this script. So please drop some comments, let me know. Save this guy, drop the batch file in the same folder as your full map image. We're not gonna need these individual tiles we just exported anymore. Just gonna delete those. And we should probably delete these two images as well because uh, we won't be needing them in the future. And run your batch file. This should create all the tiles you'll need for this default size with the proper names already applied and set you up for the next step. Now we've got a folder full of world map PNG files that need to be converted to FRM format so we can actually use it in our mod. Time for another script. Create a new text file in the same folder as the world map PNG files and save it with a .fas extension. This is a frame animator script. Copy this script, which you'll also find in the description, into your FAS text file, and don't forget to save it. Briefly what this script does in Frame Animator is, add frames 0 worldmap 00.png adds the first world map image to the first frame and first angle of Frame Animator's interface. Set option auto cutting 1 allows this script to make changes to the image. Set frames offset 000, centers the image. Set option trans p mode 1 sets Frame Animator to use the transparency color from the default palette file. Save c slash frm temp slash worldmap 00.frm saves the file in the frm format to a specific folder on the C drive for me. Make sure to either create this folder on your drive or change it to a folder you want to work with. Or you can remove c slash frm temp and just leave the name if you want. Frame Animator will just default to saving the files to its own program folder if you do. And new of course just creates a new file. Also, you'll notice that each individual image tile has its own script. There might be a better way to script this. I don't know what it is because Frame Animator's documentation is pretty limited. But if you want to add some more images to the end, just copy the last entry and adjust the file names to match your new tiles. Once you're done with that, save the script. Open Frame Animator, go to File and select Execute Script. Navigate to the script in your world map folder and double click to run it. 
As a word of warning, this is what happens when you forget to create the folder to store the FRM output files in. So don't forget to do that. Navigate to your FRM folder and you should see a bunch of world map FRM files, maybe even in the middle of being created by Frame Animator. Copy or remove all of these files to your modded Fallout 2 game under Fallout 2 slash data slash art slash interface. Boot up your game, start a new character, get to an exit grid, and check out your new world map. Yay, we've got a new map up and can travel on it, but if you travel to the west, you'll notice you can't travel past a certain point. That point matches up with the coastline edge of the original default game map. So the next thing we have to do is change this edge border to match your own map. Here's how this basically works. When the game engine loads the world map, it also reads a separate file called a mask file. A mask file is a black and white representation of the original map tile that is overlapped on the world map to determine where the player is allowed to travel and where they're not. To make one, once you've created your world map, open the full image up again and create a new layer. I'm not sure how to do this in Photoshop or any other digital editing software for that matter, but this is how you create a new layer in GIMP. On this new layer, take one of the drawing tools and using white specifically, mark off all the areas you don't want the player to be able to travel across. One tip for this, perfectly vertical and horizontal lines will block players 100% of the time, but diagonal or curved lines tend to let people through. So be careful, try to use straight lines, and maybe do some testing to make sure any funky patterns you make work in the game. If anybody has any other tips for masking off sections of the map, feel free to drop them in the comments. When you're done masking off the no-go zones with white, fill the rest of the layer with black. Now, there are again two ways of cutting this map into tiles that I'll cover here. Splicing the map into tiles in GIMP is the same as before, except for one specific detail. You have to change the color mode to black and white binary colors. In GIMP, you do this by selecting the image dropdown, then mode, and then indexed. Select the black and white one bit palette from the color map menu and click convert. Once that's done, select the image dropdown again and click slice using guides to create your mask tiles. When exporting this time, there's only one file format that will work for the next step, and that's bitmap, or BMP. So make sure to change the extension to BMP. The file names follow the exact same rules as described earlier for the world map tiles, WRLDMP00, starting at the top leftmost tile and going up from there from left to right, row by row, until you hit the last tile, which on a default sized map is world map 19. Don't worry about the alpha channel warning, it's not supposed to be there, this is a binary black and white file. You can delete any tiles that are completely black as they'll just be blank on the world map anyway, but don't forget to name your other ones in the proper order first. Now that's the long way of making a mask file, here's the short way with FFmpeg. Export the entire black and white map mask as just about any image format. Don't use JPEG though, the compression is terrible, but PNG or bitmap works pretty well. You can uncheck all of these boxes, except save color profile if using bitmap, or you can leave them all checked. Doesn't matter much either way for PNG files. And here's the batch script I've come up with for this next step. Copy this script into a batch file just like earlier. You'll notice it's very similar to the last one except for one distinct difference. Each of the output tiles are color coded using PIX format mono B, and the file names end in BMP. This converts each tile from regular RGB to binary black and white bitmap for you. Drop the batch file into the same folder as your full map mask image, but make sure to isolate the file from others of the same type, as this batch script will affect all of the files of that type in the folder. Once you're ready, run it. My default file type is PNG. I have a PNG file right here. You can put in your own extension if you're using bitmap or something else, and just press enter. When it's done, you'll have a list of world map bitmap files ready to convert to the MSK file type in the next step. Finally, grab that mask to BMP 2020 executable we downloaded earlier and copy the exe into the same folder as your mask tile bitmaps. Here's how you run it from the command line. You simply browse to the folder where your world map bitmap files and your mask to BMP 2020.exe program are located, 
you type mass to bmp 2020exe and then you add the name of the world map bitmap that you want to convert into a mask file. Press enter. And voila, you have a mask file right there. Brand new world map 00.msk. This is a command line executable, which means you either have to run it from the command line or you can write a batch script like this one. Now, this script is really simple. It just runs mass to bmp 2020exe on each binary black and white bitmap image file in the folder and converts it to a mask file. In fact, if you copy this line into the bottom of the mask batch script, it'll run automatically after cutting up the tiles. Like this. And there are your generated mask files that you need. Bear in mind though that quite a few of these are actually blank tiles. And the blank tiles can be deleted or ignored, or you can leave them in if you want. It doesn't really have a huge impact on playability or anything like that, but it does have a small effect on size. When you're ready, copy or move these MSK files to your Fallout 2 mod under Fallout 2 slash data slash data. This is important, the data slash data folder, not the interface folder. We're almost done, but there's one final step. Since you're in the data slash data folder, open up worldmap.txt again and do a search for tile zero, which is basically the same place where we change the horizontal tile setting. Below tile zero is a line art IDX equals 339. This number 339 refers to a line number in the interface.lst file located in the data slash art slash interface folder. Technically, you could change the name of the map tile here or have it refer to a different line number entirely and add your own names to the end, but I'm not yet sure how that would help anything, so you're probably better off leaving this alone for now. The next line is encounter difficulty equals zero, which is a modifier to the outdoorsman skill check for the player to be able to avoid a random encounter. Negative values are used to indicate a penalty. Positive values should provide a player buff. It's set to zero by default. I'm just going to leave it at zero, but don't let that stop you from tweaking it however you want. The next line is the important one for what we're doing. Walk mass name equals world map zero zero. This line references the file name for the mass tiles we just created and move to the data slash data folder. If you scroll down, you'll see more walk mass name entries for some other tiles, but some tiles, for instance, tile one, don't actually have an entry for this. Those that don't have entries will ignore any mass files you place in the data folder. So deleting this line is the simple way to remove the mass tile from the game without actually deleting the file. On the other hand, if you want to add a mass file that isn't here by default, and there are several entries like this, you'll have to add the line in manually. For instance, tile one has no walk mass name entry, so adding it and setting it equal to world map 01 will tell the game engine to recognize that brand new mass tile we just made for the second tile to the right. Be sure to check the rest of the tile entries to make sure each one of them has the mass entry filled out correctly for your mod. The rest of the stuff covers the type of random encounters the player will encounter on each tile. If there's interest, I'll try and cover it in a future vid, but for now, take a look at the worldmap.txt file format wiki entry I have linked below for more detailed information about what each of these game settings does. One final note before finishing up here, you remember how once you reach the coastline, all the ocean squares to the rest of it would become fully visible? Well, this single entry, Phil W, is what controls that. The wiki page says there are, theoretically, entries for all eight cardinal directions, but as far as I know, and the wiki entry itself says, only the west direction works for now. Alright, that's everything. We're ready to go. Let's finish entering the mass tiles, save this text file, and start the game up to test out our brand new world map. I kind of feel like maybe I shouldn't have drawn that little section in the corner now, because I think I'm stuck in here. Like I have, I have boxed myself inside of my own map. Anyway, thank you to everyone who contributed to this mining endeavor, Tough Gunny and Vault Dweller in particular. Special thanks to Tim Apparacle for taking the time to rewrite and upload his Mass 2 BMP 2020 converter program to GitHub for the rest of us to freely make use of and contribute to if anybody feels like it. Also, thanks to Munama Uno for hanging out on stream and helping me figure out mass files. It did take me a while to actually finish this guide, in part because it's so complicated, in part because I got sidetracked by a bunch of other stuff in my life. Thank you for your patience, and I hope to see you in a future Fallout modding video or in one of my Fallout modding streams.